In this video, we're going to learn about acid-base neutralization. First, we're going to learn the definition of a neutralization reaction, and then we're going to write chemical reactions uh, for some examples of neutralization reactions. And then finally, we're going to calculate the amounts of substances that could be produced or required to perform a neutralization reaction. So a neutralization reaction is a reaction between an acid and a base. You may think of acids as kind of the opposite of a base, and when they're in contact with each other, they're going to basically completely obliterate each other. It's kind of like one is a superhero and the other is a villain, and when they come together, they're just going to completely destroy each other. In general, when an aqueous acid-base reaction takes place, it's going to produce water and a salt. Now the word salt isn't just referring to sodium chloride, that is table salt. It's referring to an ionic compound, something that's made up of a cation, that's something with a positive charge, and that's usually a metal, and then an anion, which has a negative charge, and these two things will come together and form that salt. So let's look at an example of an acid-base reaction. We have hydrochloric acid, that's this thing right here, is reacting with sodium hydroxide. Now usually the thing that starts with an H is going to be the acid and then the other one, the base, will generally have OH at the end. Now the H from the acid is going to switch places with the metal or the cation that's in front of the base. So H will pump, bump out this sodium and the sodium will move over here and combine with the chlorine. So in this reaction, we're going to end up with the H combining with the OH, and so we'll end up with something like this, but we can rewrite this a little bit better way. We have two hydrogens, so we could just say H2O. And that's where the water comes from. The sodium will combine with the chlorine, and that's going to form the salt, so we end up with water and salt. Here's another example. Now in this example, we have a diprotic acid, that is one with two ionizable hydrogens, that's this right here. So this is sulfuric acid that's going to react with potassium hydroxide. The same thing's going to happen where we'll have the hydrogen switching places with that metal that's in front. And it's going to be really important that we remember that we're going to be producing ionic compounds. So in other words, things that have positive charges and negative charges. The charges within a compound have to balance each other. So the total number of positive must equal the total number of negative. So when hydrogen is an ion, it's going to have a plus charge, H plus. And when hydroxide is found alone, it's going to have a negative charge. So since I have a positive one and a negative one, those balance each other. So I only need one hydrogen ion and one hydroxide ion. And so that's where this H2O comes from. Now you may be wondering, well, where does that extra hydrogen come from? We have one here and we have two over here. So that's a total of three hydrogens and I only have two listed on this side. Don't worry about that yet. We'll balance this thing at the end and you'll see how all that works. Next we have the potassium which has a plus one charge. And I know potassium has a plus one charge because I can look at where it is on the periodic table. It's right here in group one, and everything in group one is gonna have a plus one charge. That's why hydrogen also has a plus one charge. And then sulfate is going to be the SO4 part of it. Now this is a polyatomic ion, and there's a list of polyatomic ions that you really should memorize, or at least have a list available. SO4 has a two minus charge. And so we have to get these two charges to balance out. I'm gonna have to add an extra potassium in order to get a total positive charge here of two plus to balance that two negative. Okay, and so I've written that formula right here showing that there's two potassiums, K2SO4. Again, you may be wondering, well, where do we get that extra potassium when we only had one over here? So the next thing we can do is we can go ahead and balance this chemical equation. When we balance the chemical equation, we're going to change the coefficients that are in front of each of these symbols. Right now, there's nothing here, and so that just means there's one of each. So we're going to adjust those values in order to balance this. So first, I'll start with the potassium, and I'm just going to add a 2 right here in front of that, and it's going to multiply everything here by 2, and so I have two potassiums now, which balances this on this side. And then I have a total of two hydrogens, 
because that 2 about to multiplies that by 2, plus these two, so I have four hydrogens right now. I'm going to go ahead and add a 2 on this side, which is going to balance out those hydrogens now. I'll have four on this side and four on this side, and then everything else will be balanced. I have one SO4 here, one of those SO4s over here, and then I have these two oxygens with these two oxygens. Okay, so let's try solving a problem. We're going to have to calculate amounts. So in this problem it says how many moles of phosphoric acid would be required to neutralize 0.25 moles of NaOH? When we're faced with a problem like this, we need to start by writing the chemical equation. So we have phosphoric acid, H3PO4, that's reacting with NaOH, so I'll just say plus NaOH. Now this is a triprotic acid, which means this has three hydrogens. We'll still do the same thing where they're going to switch place those hydrogens with that sodium. We end up with water and a salt. So I'm going to have my H2O plus I'll have sodium combining with the phosphate ion, that's PO4. Now sodium has a plus one charge, according to the periodic table, it's in group one, just like potassium. And phosphate, which is one of those polyatomic ions that you have to memorize, has a three minus charge. So we're, I'm going to need three of these sodiums in order to balance out that phosphate charge. So I can go ahead and write this as sodium Na3PO4. Now I can balance it. I'm going to need to put a 3 there, and then I'll need to put a 3 right there. And so that is balanced. First thing we have to do is write that balanced chemical equation. Now I can try to calculate the amount of phosphoric acid that's going to be required. So this balanced chemical equation is going to work just like a recipe. It tells me how much of each thing that I'm going to need and how much stuff that I'm going to produce. This recipe calls for three times as much sodium hydroxide as acid. That's what these coefficients are referring to. So it works just like a recipe that would use cups. We could say three cups of base for one cup of acid. This is just using the unit of moles. Three moles of base for one mole of acid. So to solve this problem, we're going to create a ratio that compares the amount of acid to base. Now, so what I like to do is write down what I'm given in this problem to start with. That's 0.25 moles of sodium hydroxide. And then I'm going to multiply that by the ratio that compares acid to base. Now I'm solving for the amount of acid, so I'm going to put that on top. And then the base is going to go on the bottom. Now if I look at this ratio, I have one-third the amount of acid to base. So I'm going to just going to take these coefficients right here. There's a one in front of that. When there's nothing, we just say one. And there's a three there. So I'm just going to go one-third like that. And then I'll do the math. I'll calculate this. I'll just take 0.25, multiply it by a third, and I'm going to get 0 0.083 moles of H3PO4. And that's our answer. And so that is a neutralization reaction involving an acid and a base.